Hi again, it's Chrissy here for part three of Carbine on the Return and Reunion curriculum. Uh, again, congratulations on making it this far and we're all very excited to see you when you get back. Um, and we're more excited to see all of our wonderful, all of your wonderful faces, our clients' faces, um, when we all get to return to life as normal after the global pandemic. Um, one more thing on insurance. If you end up deciding to get a deal or you find a car that you like that is in a precarious place like a salvation yard, if that car does have a salvation title with it, so you're not getting a regular title, you're getting a salvation, uh, salvage title, sorry, salvage, you will not be able to attain insurance on that vehicle, which is a problem. And you're not allowed to be driving a vehicle around on base without insurance. You're not supposed to be driving actually at all without insurance. So remind yourself too that insurance needs to be intact before you drive off the lot. Also, you need to have a driver's license before you drive off the lot. And that might seem very um, elementary that I need to be reminding people of that, but I've heard some stories, okay? So make sure you have that driver's license and make sure that you also have your, uh, your insurance intact. All right, I set Siri off. I'm just reminding her to be quiet. Okay. Next we have safety, performance, and reliability. Consumer reports are a good way to check and see if the vehicle is um, going to work and to run the way it is advertised. So check the consumer report. You can also check a Carfax. You can get a Carfax for an actually individual car, okay? Um, there are ways that you can attain that on your own. You can ask for it at the car dealership, but that's another way to kind of see generally what has happened with the vehicle and what you can kind of predict going down the road. If it's been in the shop for this one part over and over and over and over again, um, just be prepared. If it's a part that's easily replaced, that might be something that you're okay with incurring as a part of the vehicle, or if it's something that's a major um, issue, like for example, that passenger van, if it has a problem with safety, um, I might not actually want to buy that particular vehicle because it's the safety of myself and my children. Um, we also want to talk about the fuel mileage. Mileage was, uh, depending on where you live, it can be very, very important and the big cost of your vehicle. You do have some additional options with getting either a completely electric vehicle or one that is a hybrid where it uses gas and electric. There are also additional um, incentives through the government for getting a vehicle that is either all electric or partially electric. Um, I know someone that I work with who has an electric and gas vehicle but can drive to and from work on a single charge. So that's what's nice about, um, about that vehicle is they are actually not using any gas unless they go on a long trip. Also consider, because I actually really like the idea of uh, electric vehicles as well, but if you're someone who likes to do road trips, that may or may not be a good option for you if you need to be able to stop and charge it. So that just consider these are some of the things you just wanna think about before you jump on a vehicle that seems like the one that's the best for you. You also want to look at any recalls, um, check and see what, look online to see if it's been recalled for any reason. Um, and then think about, again, we talked about this earlier, the true cost of ownership of the vehicle. All vehicles are going to have issues here and there, but there are some vehicles, some types of vehicles that have very high reliability and very high consumer aware consumer reports. So that might be one of the ones you want to steer steer toward. Next, we want to think about where we want to purchase the vehicle. Okay, so you have several options, and you should check more than one for purchasing the vehicle. You can go directly to the dealership. Now, if you can probably imagine, this course was created because we did have issues where ships would pull into port and then several sailors would find their way to the area where most cars are sold with money burning in their pocket and then some of them were getting um, taken advantage of 
because they were sailors with money that wanted a nice, expensive, or snazzy car, right? So think, look at the dealership, but also check your private sailor, seller, the internet, and other buying services. Um, what's nice about a private seller is that you probably have more negotiating power with a private seller than you do with a dealership. Some people are really good at haggling and negotiating and getting a good deal, um, but dealerships are trained to get themselves a good deal. A private seller may or may not know all of the tricks and tools. They might actually want a lower price because they just want to move the vehicle. So that, think about that as well. Um, with the internet, you obviously have the power of the market. So it's going to kind of decide generally what the cost of those vehicles are going for. Um, and you can use that to your advantage. Um, a buying service is nice for one reason. You can actually test a vehicle before purchasing it. So I'm thinking of a buying service that I've heard about that I've seen people use before where they will take a they will bring a vehicle to you this is mostly in lease situations leasing a vehicle not buying a vehicle they will take it to you you'll say hey I'll try out this red four-door Camry I'm gonna try out the red four-door Camry I'll drive it around take it back um, and then I can t try this this is actually a Land Rover but um, I'll try out this Jeep next. See how I like the Jeep, drive the Jeep around, okay. Um, you'll also consider that you need insurance, all of that kind of stuff when you're doing that. But that's an op opportunity for you to actually drive the vehicle on the roads you you're want to drive them on, in the areas you want to, to see if it works for you. I know um, in California specifically, I grew up in Texas where the roads are big and the parking spaces are big. And sometimes I get in these little California parking lots and. I'm like doing this and this and this and, and my kids in the back are like, when are we going to get there? So consider too, like that might be a nice option for you if you don't know specifically what you want or specifically what will work for you. All right. So we want to, before we go to a dealership, before we test run cars, before we start talking about um, doing a test drive or looking at a vehicle, we want to look at our general research. So you can look at several of these places. I would suggest pick at least three. It's just like your um, insurance quotes. You want to get three of those. Check three of these just to kind of see what the general fair price of that vehicle. You'll want to consider the vehicle type, the mileage on that vehicle, and how old that vehicle is. So the year it was created. So consider two that you have a starting offer when you are at the dealership. This is kind of the sticker price that's on there. And then they will put the dealer invoice on there, just the price for talking to those guys and the coffee they give you and all the fun chat you've had. Um, then you'll have any holdbacks or incentives. And then they will add an additional 3.5%. So consider that whatever price that they have, the sale price, the, the Welcome home from the USS Best Ship. We're gonna throw an additional military discount at you. Um, there will be an additional um, additional invoices on top of that, okay? Some of those are negotiable, some of them are not, but just realize that that sticker price is not a sticker price, okay? Now, I'm gonna catch you up on part four in the next video. We're gonna talk about negotiation strategies.